Yeah. It just started as a Facebook group. I was like, I cannot leave this with like page, two actually. To do. Yeah. And then, it's crazy. Um, like, I wanted some indigenous cultural activities <laughs> in the East End because Wabano so far. So I started, I went to the Shankman and the Ottawa School of Art and I asked them if uh, they would give me some space for free to provide free classes, um, indigenous art classes and uh, free drumming. And they said, okay, so, um, so yeah, so the the organization, um, I guess, is is myself. Um, I started it, and then Chantal and uh, Crystal um, joined in to help out. So it's it's 100% volunteer, just people who want to bring some indigenous culture to um, Orleans. Hear the concentration in everyone. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's not at all. But I can also see how it could be a bit meditative after a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is. You lose time. Right? If, if, if you have no patience, this is definitely something that will teach you patience. <laughs> it's important for a couple of reasons. One, one of my um, goals is to reach people who, in Orleans or in the East End, um, who have indigenous roots but have, are not connected with them because of colonization and the attitudes of society has been um, your cultures. It's not a culture, it's a caricature. Right? So that shift is changing now and a lot of people are feeling safer to identify as Indigenous. So, um, so I wanted this to help them uh, find a place where they could come because I say Indigenous or non-Indigenous. So therefore they don't exactly have to identify as Indigenous and they could still come, learn, and then it gives them a place to learn a little bit of, about some cultural um, arts and um, traditions. And at the same time, um, there's, there's some connections that you can make, right? With other indigenous people because the same thing because of colonization, um, there is, there's really not a lot of connection for people. Um, you know, there's not like, a place where you can meet up, like let's say for people who go to church and they all can all congregate, or people who you know are in a club, like they can get together. There's really um, nothing like that, you know, even for kids in school. So, um, so I wanted it for that too, but I also wanted it for non-Indigenous people who want to come and learn and connect, because when you make these human connections. That's when things change, that's when attitudes change, and, um, you know, like, and when, when we're beating, um, you know, you can have conversations that aren't, you know, in your face conversations, because it's very much like parallel uh, conversations. So we've talked about things like, um, you know, missing murdered indigenous women. We've talked about, um, uh, Indigenous people not being allowed to own land or a house, right, or get a mortgage. And then the non-Indigenous people, they're surprised, right? Like, what? That's, you know, we're not being able to, to vote, right? And it wasn't that long ago. So, so, yeah, it's pretty cool that those things are happening unplanned. That wasn't planned. But now that I know that that happens, um, you know, it's nice to, to see that happen. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what it's all, and then beading itself, um, you know, it's not like doing a craft. It's not like, okay, I'm getting together with other women and we're, we're having a knitting club or, uh, you know, whatever, some other craft. It's something that I know that my ancestors did and they did and they did 
and the same with the other people. So it's not just about you know, doing a craft. Mm -hmm. It's connecting to each other and then to the past too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I have a friend who they started drawing. I don't know, I'm saying like three years ago. When he's at work, he draw and then he posted on Facebook. I think it'll be easier to do okay. that thing not before not great. Me. No. But he just kept doing yeah. it and doing it and doing it. He is amazing now. Like he mm -hmm. is it's no, incredible. I was this watching work. like how because you know, no one's mm -hmm. born and then no, they all yeah. get this all ready first. Yeah. We're yeah. Paid, we're right above it. So the robe at the ends. It's yeah. practice, right? It's practice. I just yeah. took a bunch of some robe. I mean you yeah. sure about people who have more kind of like natural abilities yeah. and some yeah. things. And but with practice well, I read this book. People oh, can do a lot of things. It's called like the coaching oh, factor or something. Yes. And it talks about how there are some people who are gifted yeah. with certain things, but they've done studies to see um, people who aren't gifted, who, who it does take effort, um, if they practice every day. Yeah. Um, I think it was violin, but they did it for a couple of things. One of the things was violin. And they found that the people who practiced every day actually surpassed, could surpass the people whose natural yes. talent were naturally yeah. talented. My partner's twin daughters were learning piano, and one was really, she was kind of like a really virtual, so really easy for her to learn, and she was going up through all of the levels really quickly, mm -hmm. and her sister. It was like really, really hard, she had to practice and practice and practice and practice. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, when it got hard for the girl who found it easy, she quit. Right. <laughs> because right. she hit her plateau and she was like, I, this is she too hard now. She was working so hard, right? That's right. And then the sister who actually had to work her way through the whole thing ended up actually staying with piano and really surpassing her sister's yeah. skills. They say it takes 10,000 hours to master a skill. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think I spent that much on this puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Master.